Friday, May 12th, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at the concept of uh, private and public sector, of uh, the concept of confidence in those sectors. And of course, I have covered hyperinflation many times and the fact that hyperinflation is the total collapse of confidence in the currency. And of course, it is government that runs the currency with the central bank. And I'm going to reference today Martin Armstrong. Uh, I've got here his uh, treatise from 2000, uh, 2008. Uh, it's called It's Just Time. You might wonder why it's not a book. Well, uh, I'm going to tell you that later. Uh, before that, though, let's look at some of the uh, headlines, some of the news that we've seen in the last 24 hours. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, hypocrisy out there. Uh, I noticed that Jamie Dimon came out and said that uh, the government should ban short selling in bank stocks and that people who try to do it should be uh, punished <laughs> by the law. Uh, hypocrisy, right? Uh, JP Morgan, uh, the bank that has been manipulating the prices of gold and silver probably for decades and he comes out and says that JP Morgan the bank that's paid uh, I don't know about 50 billion in fines in the last 20 years he's he's got the goal to come out and say that that's hypocrisy in my opinion um so <laughs> I think uh there's also Janet Yellen I think she's in uh Japan for the finance ministers meeting for the G7. Yes, they like to jet set around uh, these people. They were in Washington, D.C. for the IMF spring meeting a few weeks ago. Now they've jetted off to, to Japan. Yes, uh, the people who, who are so concerned about climate change, right? But back to the point of the hypocrisy, I think Janet Yellen said that the Chinese are trying to use uh, economic coercion on other countries. Well, what about the United States, uh, the country uh, that's been using sanctions uh, against other uh, countries? Isn't that economic coercion? So there you go, uh, the Diamond Yellen uh, show. <laughs> they're in the final. We're going to see if they're going to get even more hypocritical, uh, if there is such a thing, of course. And what else is going on? Well, we've got uh, Andrew Bailey. Um, I don't know what to make of him. Either he's very incompetent uh, or he's evil. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's more the former. He's just plain incompetent. He's been brainwashed as a Keynesian like all these central bankers have, and uh, very few, uh, they're in their echo chamber, so to speak. But yeah, uh, we had the meeting yesterday, they raised rates, they're only at 4.5%. And why do I say only? And the mainstream press will come out and say, oh, this is the highest rate since 08, to make it seem like they're fighting inflation. But we've got RPI at 14%. So uh, monetary policy is still accommodative. Uh, the Bank of England, uh, we know now, will come out and bail things out in terms of QE. We saw that last year, uh, in September, October time. So what the Bank of England is doing here, and this is uh, specifically to my viewers in the UK, uh, they're bailing out the government <laughs> by basically telling the financial markets they're going to keep uh, an eye on gill yields if they ever start going up we're going to go and intervene and buy more of it and you know speculators investors um they'll take that you know they'll buy it because they know that the, the bank of england uh, will be there to to save the day and that's why uh, gill yields are still uh, ridiculously low. 
And I think uh, there will be a point, though, where uh, confidence in the public sector, in government, uh, confidence in the Bank of England is going to collapse. And that's when we're going to get the, the real uh, phase transition, the crack up boom, uh, just like uh, Martin Armstrong talks about here in his uh, treatise, which I'm going to come to in a few minutes. I just want to finish here with the Bank of England. So yeah, that's what they're doing. They're extracting wealth. So that's what the government is doing here in the UK. They're extracting wealth from you to, to make sure that the government keeps running <laughs> because uh, yes, uh, these people want power and control. They might actually throw in a war in there. So to distract you, I, I saw that yesterday we, we sent uh, as a gift, <laughs> uh, us taxpayers sent some more missiles to the Ukraine. So the, the Russians will be impressed with that, of course. And in the U.S. as well, public confidence, <laughs> I think, is completely shot in, in, the, in government, really. Uh, I don't have to really uh, go over it that much more uh, about that for you. Uh, but uh, another uh, piece of news. So we've got very high inflation <laughs> and we just got the uh, GDP numbers for the UK. And this number, of course, would have been negative if the government wasn't uh, spending as much as it is running as big a deficit, uh, deficit as it is. So GDP grows by a whopping 0.1% in the first quarter of 2023. So there you go. Um, what's going on? Well, government has crowded out the private sector. Uh, it's destroying the private sector, but it's destroying itself as well. And hopefully this uh, crack up boom phase transition will start soon. <laughs> and I think the price of gold and silver as well. And I know silver is got hammered quite, quite badly, but uh, I'm not concerned. When the price of those things start zooming up, that's when, yeah, all confidence is going to be lost. So that's what I wanted to cover here. Now back to uh, Mr. Armstrong's uh, treatise. And uh, unfortunately, he was in prison with no charge, I think, Martin Armstrong, for 11 years up until 2011. So uh, this is from, uh, what's the date? October 10th, 2008. <laughs> there you go. And how come I have this? Well, because at the time, uh, at a certain point when he was in prison, he started writing and a lot of his writings went on to Scribd. And uh, a friend of mine at work, a colleague of mine and friend of course as well, uh, we used to read it. And uh, he had it uh, printed out and we had it uh, bound at work. At M we used to work at MF Global or Men Financial. And we, uh, yeah, we had this bound. So I still have it. It's really, there's some really interesting stuff here. I don't know if you can find this on the uh, Armstrong Economics website. So it's entitled, here you go, I'll show it to you again. And I'll read it now. It's it's just time. The decline and fall of the United States? Question mark. The global financial system? Question mark. Or capitalism? So, this of course is his uh, treatise on cycles and um, markets, on governments, on economics. And here on page one, this is really interesting. Uh, because he says here, and this is all to do, of course, with the uh, 07 08 crisis. The culprit is not merely the mortgage market, neither is it exclusively Wall Street and the banks. It is a combination of blame that squarely rests uh, both upon the public and private sectors. Are we to be so short-sighted that we will now just destroy our entire political economy in quest of a quick fix? Are we to yield to the rantings of Karl Marx and his hatred of the rich to blame the high salaries uh, on Wall Street when 
that has nothing to do with current events any more than uh, 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 huge salaries to sport figures. If we do not honestly examine the causes, we will f in fact destroy the blessings of liberty for uh, our posterity, depriving them of freedom merely to use current events as an excuse to punish the rich as Marx espoused. We face major problems. And here's the uh, interesting part. The Dow Jones, and this he wrote in 2008, the Dow Jones could fall to three and a half thousand if confidence swings to, go to the government, or it could go through a, a phase transition and reach 35,000 if the swing is back to the private sector. Gold is likely to go to two and a half thousand or jump uh, beyond even 5,000. We are staring into a future where the political economy and capitalism are at, at risk in a murky cloud of uncertainty articulated uh, only by George, well, George Orwell and Ayn Rand. There are those who reject history as offering any knowledge. Perhaps, perhaps these are the same people whose parents, parents uh, told them not to stick their finger into the flame of a candle because it would burn. Yet they did it anyway, rejecting the lessons of history. It is, time, it is times like the present, where economic pain produces people like Hitler and Lenin. Capitalism is subject to booms and busts, simply because that is the nature of mankind. So, I think we're getting the... Uh, collapse of confidence, faith and confidence in the public sector. And as Martin Armstrong said, we could see the Dow go to 35,000. Well, we're at 33, uh, gold two and a half thousand or even five. Well, we're at 2000. Yes, a little lower than he, he forecast, but uh, I think that's where we are. And uh, if you really think uh, there's a lot of uh, faith and confidence in the public sector and government in the UK, in Europe, and the United States. Please comment below. I don't think there is. And of course, nothing in life is certain. We, we, we're just trying to read the tea leaves here, look back in time, and see what, what could happen. But uh, I think his uh, cycles uh, work, the 8.6 year cycles that he's uh, worked out. I think it bottoms in 2028. We we might see a, an up leg into the beginning of, of 2024. That doesn't that doesn't mean of course uh that the stock market is going to go up or gold is going to go up. It, it, it's just a, uh, the economic cycle. I, I think uh the 2028 bottom will be when all faith and confidence is lost maybe in, in, in government, even though it feels like uh, we're there right now. But sometimes things take longer than, um, yeah, than we think they should. So let's uh, quickly look at uh, where the markets are this morning. So um, it's uh, quarter, let me get the right screen here, quarter past 8 a.m. London time. So we've got spot gold trading at 2010. It's down about five, five bucks. High's been uh, 20 and the low has been 2005. Of course, uh, silver for some reason <laughs> got hammered yesterday. I think 5% at one point while wow, gold almost didn't move. But uh, what do I think is happening? Well, yeah, probably shenanigans within the bullion banks, <laughs> probably Mr. Diamond and his bullion bank uh, traders smashing the price of silver while he goes on TV, I think it was Bloomberg TV or whatever, and says that people shouldn't be allowed to short bank stocks, right? But uh, at the same time, uh, if you look underneath uh, the bonnet or the hood, um, things are looking very good, I think, for silver. Uh, and you might think, what are you talking about? Well, Rafi Faber tweeted uh, last night, registered silver supplies at COMEX 
just dipped below 30 million ounces for the first time since 2017 and only for the third time ever over 122 million ounces have been drained from the registry since silver squeeze uh so there you go and it says keep stacking so <laughs> i'm gonna hopefully uh be buying some more silver and some gold uh hopefully today and and this weekend i'm gonna keep stacking <laughs> because i'm actually very concerned about having too much fiat currency uh funds because at least here in the UK, they're losing control of inflation, even in Italy. Uh, I saw that uh, food prices are rising a lot and they're having problems with pasta, which is very popular in Italy. Uh, at least the government there decided not to uh, cap the price of pasta because there was, uh, the public was clamoring for it. And I think they did the right thing. Because if you limit the price, cap the price of something, you create even more shortages. Of course, here in the UK, uh, Andrew Bailey is blaming uh, food prices for inflation, of course, which is completely ridiculous. It's, um, yeah, it, it's like blaming, it's like blaming your belly if you eat too much and you get too fat. It's like blaming the fat for you being fat instead of blaming yourself for eating too much and not exercising enough. So let's continue with the markets. So silver right now is at 24, it's down 18 uh, cents. Where do I think silver could go down to? Well, I, I think we could go down to 23.50 because that's where there's a trend line there from which we broke out a few weeks ago. So that would be a retest of that trend line. Trend line. And sometimes uh, markets do that and it's actually very bullish as long as it holds that 23.50. So uh, yeah, right now, as I said, we're down uh, 17 cents. High's been 24.25. The low has been 23.86, actually. Uh, what about resistance on the upside? Well, I think 24.50 will be a key level because that's where I think the stops were triggered yesterday when he broke through that level. But again, I will re reiterate, this is just about trading gold and silver. We're talking here because I'm giving you levels. But the bigger picture here, the most important thing is that you have the physical gold and silver. Uh, <laughs> uh, what I'm trying to say here, uh, people who were, let's say, trying to trade gold and silver in Venezuela and Zimbabwe before the hyperinflation, Yes, they might have done well, but uh, I mean, it was irrelevant at one point, right? Because you couldn't get gold and silver because the currency collapsed. That's what I'm trying to say here. Uh, anyway, to the stock market, uh, the Dow futures is up 62, 33,370. The uh, NASDAQ 100 futures is up 16 points and the S&P is up seven and a half to the currencies, and we saw the dollar rally strongly yesterday. Uh, right now, sterling is up a little bit, up 0.2 at 125.35. The euro as well is up about 0.2, 109.31. The dollar is up versus the yen, 0.2 of a percent, 134.80. Dollars down slightly versus the U1 at 695.30. Let's quickly check. Uh, dollar ruble, uh, dollar ruble uh, down another two percent. The dollar trading at 75, 7550. Uh, Aussie dollar that's uh, unchanged uh, at 67 double O. The uh, uh, dollar is unchanged versus the loonie or Canadian dollar 134.84, and the Kiwi dollar is down just over half a percent at 62.61. Uh, to the commodities, uh, we've got Brent crude down about uh, a third of a percent at 74.50. WTI is down a third as well at 70.63. And about crude, I've seen that uh, the Biden administration is still selling uh, millions of barrels from the strategic petroleum reserves. And those reserves are at record lows. 
Uh, so how, how much longer can uh, they keep manipulating uh, the price of oil? <laughs> no wonder OPEC cut production, right? Uh, High-grade copper, well, that's uh, up half a percent at 373. And we'll finish off with the bond market. Uh, the uh, let's see the one month T bill. <laughs> uh, that's up 21 basis points. It's almost at six percent. We're at uh, 575. Would you want to put <laughs> uh, lend Uncle Sam your money for a month, seeing that uh, that he could default in the beginning of June? Well. <laughs> uh, yeah, you probably want a lot more than 5.7. I think that rate could go to 6 very soon. We'll have to watch it. Uh, the two-year yield is at 391 on change. 10 years at 340. Let's quickly look at the uh, gilt market, which is a, a sham, really. And uh, I do expect these yields to explode one day. And that's when everything will uh, collapse, I think. Uh, confidence in the in government and the central bank that is because the private sectors we're always going to be there <laughs> uh, real people who who create something or do something uh, it's a good thing <laughs> the public sector getting annihilated because they've become too big anyway uh, so let's see the two-year yield hasn't really done much is at 376 so yeah just the old old game of manipulation here the 10 years at 375 and we've got uh, the cost of living rising by 14 percent um, so savers are being decimated really uh, and with that I'm going to wish you all a, a very good rest of the day and a very good weekend unfortunately Mike couldn't do the Mike and Mario show today so it's only going to be next week so uh, there you go.